So I have a few poems today. Some of them are new and some of them are older, um, but I really hope that you like them. Uh, the first is called Leaving. I tried to stay rooted, but when you wilt long enough, they will call you weeping. Whether willow or wound, I still had to sweep away what is left of a life here. Arrange it all neatly. Laminate the certificates, the diplomas, the degrees, the documents they ask for when they decide if I will be living or if I will be a liability. At this point in the history, I am not being chased, but it still feels like running. I am willfully turning in the key. Unlike those who left before me, at this point, the divide is a Gulf Arabian, and I must wash the sand off my feet. I am hoping for a home the ones after won't have to leave. The next is called Coming Home. I saw the burn of blade unburied, the whites of the white's eyes, teeth wide, yet closed to mutter hesitation in every interaction with her, I saw it. Felt their fingers, though they were not on me, not this flesh, though there the flesh is plenty. I learned some Spanish, babe. Learned all the ways language is long and heavy, particularly on the tongue that is not speaking it. I felt too tall in a land of tall people. I felt too short among giants. I felt a giant of a hand cup closed, closed to crush me. I wondered if that was God. I think I have forgotten who God is. I am not sure how much of God is muscle memory. My mouth could not bear it. My mouth could not bear it. At the airport, they took the Zatar from me. They said it was strange. They said it was my name. I think they were frightened. They have never seen anything this green. Thank you. The next is called Rumpelstiltskin. Listen, even Rumpelstiltskin wept at the sound of his own name. That is, finally, a mouth wet and dark to dance in. That is, finally, a rest for feet worn weary white. That is, finally, the bone peaks, the girl refuses to sleep, sleep is the girl refuses to speak, sleeps in this puddle of silk spun shiny, spun gold. Sometimes it feels like you're writing your own tongue twister when it comes to poetry. <laughs> the next is untitled. They told me gardens only grow if you water them. So I turned mine into a flood. Imagined Noah and his great big ark tried to cross it, saw every animal fall to its death by drowning, then blinked, and realized I had only soaked my boots instead. Somewhere beyond right and wrong is the gray of a knowing, the slipping of a string from gray matter causing nausea, otherwise known as nostalgia, otherwise known as time. This time, I am nostalgic. For a time, I couldn't believe that there is a garden that there is something beyond right and wrong besides the black and white of a belief in some after, way after the before of all this. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm sure I was in the garden, swaying to the bliss of a mirage and a melody I refuse to open my eyes to until the hand of an honest realization presses its heel into my mouth and every memory of a made up thing is muff muffled out of existence, roomy. In all of your whirling, in all of your yearning to me, God, will you tell me about this garden? Will you tell me that it is gray? Will you tell me that those I loved and lost are happy and that I'll see them again someday? Thank you. <laughs> All right, the last is called natural, Disa natural Disaster. I prayed to the skies for some kind of love to drown in and the rain was a reply that instead I must become the sea. How can I? when the tides have pushed me back to reveal a strip of sand that looks like the bare skin of my belly. And I am so used to sand castles built here, only to see them washed away by wave stretch marks, like stitched together seams for when I swelled so much to my cells shook, a tsunami. See, my hands have held others, but they've held myself together the most. There have been days when I don't think my arms can take the pressure anymore, but when all collapses, I know that the most beautiful things can be built from the rubble the most amazing from the avalanche that buries all that used to be. And the most beautiful thing that I have built is a body broken, split open, yet still breathes. No, 
I did not just slip into the soft skin. Then it has been years of convincing my flesh to fit in it, my muscles to mold themselves around bones, too sharp edged to sand down, too large to lug around. It has been years of dragging feet and knock need expectations at the mirror, mirror on the wall. I really don't want to be fairest of them all, but if I could just stand the reflection looking back at me, maybe you can convince me I am not ugly. It has been years. Nothing but fault lines and finding faults in my lines, my every step, a scratch on the seismograph, the boom of my thunder thighs louder than any voice of reason, my storm shaking the shutters of this haunted house, and somehow it managed to rain all season, weather pains and veins like electricity splitting open the sky. I spent too long comparing myself to tornadoes and hurricanes. Imagine my limbs into the spin of a cyclone and wished I could smash as much into smithereens. I sung the words of self-love a thousand times at midnight in the dark. Spun myself dizzy till it appeared it has been years of convincing, of speaking directly to you are worthy. You are worthy, you are enough for this body and this body is quite enough shelter from every natural disaster you put yourself through. And now I look into the mirror, mirror and ask the girl standing there, you, how do you walk the way you do command attention like a rose gold resurrection this strong and yet this soft? No, I did not just slip into the soft skin. It was more than a snap of the fingers to become the sea. It has been years of erosion against the mountains in my mind that kept me from caring for these parts and pieces of mine. And just like the calm after the passing of what felt like the end of everything, the sun does come up and I will not stop this body of water from basking in its shine. Thank you so much.